Hey, Chris Cantelmo here with another Daily Vibration, talking about the DMT experience. And I've gotten a lot of questions about sound, sights and sounds in a DMT breakthrough. And part, part of the, I, th I think some of these questions stem from the fact that our hero, Terrence McKenna, the psychonaut, psychedelics pioneer, experimenter, I shouldn't say pioneer really, he just sort of kept the, uh, kept the movement moving after the late 60s and early 70s when the, when the psychedelic revolution really happened in the United States. And then it died down in the early 70s basically because they became illegal and, and uh, the movement was driven underground. People stopped talking about it really publicly. And Terrence McKenna kept on with it and tried all different psychedelics at different doses and spoke very eloquently about it. And Terrence, his favorite psychedelic was psilocybin. Well, certainly his, his, his most commonly used psychedelic was psilocybin. And McKenna talks about how the mushroom used to rave to him. Terrence would actually speak to the mushroom. And I've done uh, psilocybin mushrooms hundreds of times, maybe 300 times. And I never had a conversation with a mushroom. No mushroom ever spoke to me. And I, I kind of think of it a little bit weird, even the notion of speaking to the mushroom. I think what psychedelics do is they allow us to tune in to different... Well, I, I think that we get information from the outside world this isn't it isn't even debatable it's not like i think it the fact of the matter is, is that we get information from the outside world mainly through waves sound waves or electromagnetic waves directly into our eyes and after i started doing dmt i realized that we get other wavelengths of electromagnetism right through our skulls, right into our heads. I think maybe somewhere the pineal gland or some other component of our brain and our nervous system is like an antenna to other wavelengths of electromagnetism than just the visual light that we get through our heads. And that shouldn't be a real surprise to anyone, though I, I really, when, when people used to talk about... Uh, the nervous system being an antenna, I would roll my eyes like, come on, that's bullshit. That's, that's a, like a biological, how could a piece of meat be, a, be an antenna? But then when I, when I had started having these DMT experiences, my, that, my view completely changed. Without question, our bodies are basically, we're walking antennae. And there's some structure, some, some maybe it's a series of structures that allows our brain to, to take in information. It's not just like, it's not just random waves that you, you get information, you get, you get feelings, you get inspiration when you lock into these different frequencies doing DMT. Now for me, there's no real sound involved there when you go and, and, I, and you have these interactions with entities, the entities can take different forms. There are, there are entities that appear as jesters. There are entities that appear as angels. There are entities that some have very human form, some have not human form at all. Some are very machine-like. I've, I've had breakthroughs where, uh, what would it be? Almost picture, picture like a, a waterfall made from, instead of it being water, moving I don't know think of it almost like a digital waterfall the little the pixels you see everything is very pixelated and very very precise and and, and it's, instead of water flowing it's almost like perfect little cues zzz, where the where the waterfall zzz, looks like a looks like some kind of a computer processing information as it goes down where it looks like you, what you're looking at is really a, like a, some kind of super sophisticated computer that seems to be very busy working away at some problem. 
And with all the colors of the rainbow, it's, uh, this, it's something that's very non-random, but you can't quite figure out exactly what it's up to. And um, you some, sometimes when you see things, things like that, you get the you have some feeling that something is trying to be communicated to you, so that you don't feel like you're just looking at some mistake or some some random process. And other other entities, they seem to go out of their way to get to to have you stare in a certain place, and then they shine light in your eyes, and then you get ideas in your head. Now that could be completely imaginary, but oftentimes you get called to action. And I've talked about in the past where I got called to action by this, basically this alien, uh, what I describe as a feline insect alien came into my view and just shined this light. And basically I said, was given the message, go get in touch with the government and, and make a change in the world, get people to stop polluting this planet because it's not just our planet these other entities have a place here too and they're sick of us polluting and they said call get in touch with the government called call the FBI is what I brought out of it and I call the FBI this is a fascinating story that I'll, I'll get into detail in another video I had the FBI come to my house and watch me vape DMT I'm certainly the first person in history to do that Jerry Loza and uh, Peter Lee at the Los Angeles FBI. So anyway, the, so that, that entity interaction, there's communication there, but it's not by sound, it's by light. And the only real sounds that I've had associated with DMT are occasionally on a very high dose that's sort of beyond breakthrough level. When, so, when I, I sort of consider it an overdose because things get, get so crazy. It's almost like just an atom bomb going off. In the come up to that, there's a, it, it's, it's hard to explain, but I don't know, it's, it's, this is gonna sound really weird, but you don't know if you're like seeing the sounds or you're actually hearing sounds. I think you do actually hear. Like, and I'm, so, so I'm gonna try to, to uh, reproduce it, but I'm, I'm not gonna do a very good job. But as the come up happens, you hear like bing, 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 like like almost like a uh, like a pinball machine or something, or or a, a video game where you've you know you've reached a certain level and there's some some sense of uh, uh, celebration or something. But this but when 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 you when you get to that level of DMT and that the bing, 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 it's it's almost. It, it tends to be a, a very unpleasant sound, almost like, hey, you've overdone it, and now you're going to have some bad things happen to you. The bad things are about to happen to you. So that, that sound, and again, it's not doesn't seem the sound that's coming through your ears. It, it's a, it's not completely visual, but it's not really auditory it's like almost like a n whole nother sense organ is being dealt with but I do think that there is something there's something gonna be very interesting gonna be learned from this and that has to do with the refresh rate of our sensory systems and uh, so what do I mean by that in our Visual systems, people talk about how many frames per second can the human eye or visual system process. And when, when uh, motion pictures were first being developed, they had to choose a certain number of frames per second to be shown in a film. So it would create the illusion of motion. But if you look at films, films are just a bunch of uh, still photos show to you very quickly. And because the, the visual system, there's a certain amount of time required for the visual system to, to go basically from one frame to another. And if you move the frames at a fast enough rate, the, the illusion gets created, of, anyway, the illusion of motion gets created. And for many, many years, 